Well, I would imagine you would need to get nuts and bolts tightened if you would want to carry on your safari, Taylor, but it, I'm sure that must have made Taylor giggle quite a bit. Tumbo is still sitting in the same place. He's keeping his pose for our sunset. What I might do, VM, is just go back slightly for you, although I see the spike thorn is getting in the way on the right-hand side, just to line up the sun with his face. But that's the spike thorn, the green plant on the right, that VM's showing you. And so it's a little, little bit in the way if I go back for VM, so I actually might just stay where I am. The funny thing is, is that that little spike thorn is going to block our perfect sunset because if I go back just a little bit then the sun will set right behind his head. Although he's not looking the most elegant that he's ever looked with his tongue out the way he is. And I wonder why cats do this. They do it regularly. We saw Asana doing it the other day when he was quite hot and is his tongue hanging out like that as he panted away. And I, and I know the theory behind it and why but it just seems completely ridiculous when they've got their tongues hanging out. They almost look a little simple when they do that. And you can see there's a little fly on his nose as well, which I'm sure will irritate him a little bit. You might find him just shake his head a little bit to get rid of that fly at some point. But put your tongue away. You don't look the smartest when you have your tongue out. <laughs> cats will be cats, though. And you see it in domestic cats as well. They also do the same thing when they're sleeping. Now, I don't know how much longer he's going to be awake for. He's starting to really kind of bob his head and get to that tired kind of phase where he might just flop down but there's our sunset is starting to get just better and better oh and the yawn at sunset oh i was hoping he was going to throw his head back a little bit further maybe he will maybe he's going to do it for us but i definitely think our submission for sunset is as good as any submission could possibly be i don't really know how much better to make a sunset than what we've got right there like i said there might have been one or two little things but it is as spectacular as possible now Megan who's got the best attitude votes team Tumba and so we'll go with Megan as well I'm a team Tumba man as well we know VM is too and he's busy watching a water buck that's actually crossing the dam wall at the moment so there's a water buck that is walking slowly across the dam wall and that's why Tumba is looking so intently as the water buck comes across from Chitwa Lodge there it is so that is directly across from where Tumba is and that water buck probably has no idea that Tumba is even here he's got a very good idea that the water buck is there because it's right out in the open and if he sees a baby water buck in amongst that you might find that his reaction will be slightly different but there we go look how he's watching it's a lot more intent in his eyes now than what he was showing two seconds ago with a tongue out and eyes closed he looks a lot more focused and a lot more like a leopard and less like a dopey character oh but that is just absolutely perfect look at the light behind him it's gold 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 Riti, no, I don't think the green in his eyes helps with better night vision. At the end of the day, you'll find that all of these leopards have very good night vision. Now, look, you see, he's changed his position. Oh, and it's actually even better for us. His paws are out now. His head's a little bit behind the grass, but paws are out. But at the end of the day, all leopards have to survive and have to move around out here and be effective in the night. And so whether their eyes are brown, yellow, green, blue, whatever the color may be, they've all got to work in the same way and they've all got to be able to see at night and so no I don't think eyes are better color or green is a better color because then leopards would have evolved with all of them to have green eyes I think it's more about the cells that are in those eyes and so you find he's got more kind of he's got more rods than cones and the same as any other leopard they'll have a high percentage of rods which allows them to see much better at night than during the day or to see color like we see during the day but I think that water buck's onto something. The water buck has just stopped and looking at all of us. And oh, look at that. How nice is that? Orange, orange, orange backdrop to a beautiful young male leopard. It is absolutely perfect. Now we just need him to do a nice big yawn for us in that orange light. And I think we've absolutely nailed it. The thing is with that water buck is that water buck is far too big for him so there's no ways that he can really go after that water buck I mean, he's even though he's a developing young man and he's you know he's getting much bigger and much stronger and more powerful Thomas you were wondering about this as well but he, he's just not going to be powerful enough just yet for something of that size also he doesn't have the technique just yet you know at the end of the day he's still learning he's a young leopard he's only just started hunting for himself and so that's a bit more than he can probably chew 
going after something like that. And so he's going to have to have a situation where he's going to have to just learn a little bit and start honing and sharpening his teeth and claws, so to speak, on small animals like impalas and dikers and steenbok and scrub hairs and those kind of things. And eventually in time, he can then graduate to water buck and he can be like his dad, who is an effective water buck hunter. I've seen Tinga. Tingana and Mbul actually, depending on which one it is, it could be any of them, or quarantine even could be his dad, I doubt it, but it's possible. And you might find a situation that any one of those would go after waterbuck, well I've seen all of them go after waterbuck before, and so, you know, at the end of the day, he will go after those things later in life, but it's probably a little on the big side for him at this stage of the game. Oh, look at that, look at that. See how he's watching the water buck? He's watching the water buck run away now because there's a vehicle crossing the dam wall and so the water buck is trotting back towards the, da the lodge itself. And that's why he's watching with eyes so intently. Wow, that is absolutely stunning. Spoilt is what we are being by the sighting, that is for sure. It is not in any way disappointed and he never does to be honest he's he's a curious cat and constantly seems like he's up to something i was saying to vm when we were off air because obviously vm was in kenya and hasn't spent nearly as much time with tumba as maybe sebastian or senzo or the guys that have been here for quite a long time during the sort of mara season and i was saying to him the one thing i love about tumba is that it's very seldom that he sleeps for long periods of time he tends to watch things he looks at things he generally gives you something all the time and so i like spending time with him for that reason. He's not a cat that tends to sleep all the time. He often is, has his eyes open and watching and looking at the birds that fly over, looking at the insects, listening. Um, he likes to take in his environment. And he's often actually quite even interactive with us. He often stares at us as like when we found him, he was looking up at us with these big eyes, just kind of watching and taking it easy and really looking. So he's a, he's a great cat to spend a lot of time with and, and I really enjoy every sighting I have with him, not only because he's a spectacular looking individual, bit because he does have a bit of character to him and he tends to always be up to something and, and, and Hosanna is also very similar in that regard and Hosanna also gets up to a lot and but he I see Hosanna starting to edge into more the bad ways of the older male leopards oh, there's a very brave dove that just flew over his head edging more into the ways of the older males and getting a lot more kind of stationary and sleepy as the days are going on and he's getting a little older sorry Vim. so I'm sorry about that I just took my foot off the brake and it just lurched forward a little bit. I do apologize. Oof, look at that. Those eyes are just magnificent. Can you imagine when he's a fully grown seven, eight year old male, what he's going to look like? He's going to be bulky, he's going to be big, and I think with a few more scars, he's going to be one of those leopards that's really going to stand out as an incredibly looking individual, or incredible looking individual, should I say. Sun is getting to the right color now. It's that more orange coloration and there's kind of really a little fireball in the sky. And as we go back out, you can see it's almost down. I don't think we're gonna to get too much more light. Unfortunately, I think it's gonna to get to a situation where it's probably going to fade away fairly soon. And maybe that yawning is a sign that he's gonna get up and start moving. I think this might be a situation where he might come out a little bit. And like I say, hopefully he'll come and sit. There's a little ledge here and if he can sit there for us, that's just going to be the most spectacular place for him to go. I think the flies are also a bit irritating him a bit, and you can see ears are twitching, face is twitching, a bit of a yawn. So it seems like he's almost at that point where he might decide to move a little bit and head in a different direction. Hopefully it's, like I say, up towards the dam wall, because it will be beautiful up there if he does head that way. What are you biting? Right, now, while Tumba, oh, there we go, now he's up and moving, and so let's see if he's going to come straight towards us. Looks like he might. It seems as though he's going to come and say hello. Hello, boy. Are you going to come and be friends with us? Are you going to come and introduce yourself to VM? Hmm? There we go. He is literally, I would say from me, maybe not even one meter. Hello, boy. There's the side of the car. <laughs> Are you curious about the back of our car? How cool is that? So <laughs> epic. Every time I see a leopard that close, it just gets better. And you can see he's now going to sit right next to the car. Is that where you've decided you want to be? Hey, young man? Okay. 
and you're welcome to be wherever you want. Now, I think he might drink, so I'm just gonna go forward. Sorry, Viam. Let's just go forward here quickly. Sorry, I'm just gonna try and get into a situation where we can get ourselves into a little bit of a better spot for him to drink because he's in a little kind of thicket there. It's not a great place. I don't think there's much water for him, so he's looking and trying to kind of scan around. But there we go. How's that? That's pretty special. We kind of eye level with him as he's looking for water and trying to find a spot just to drink out of. That's absolutely perfect. How cool is that? That is so epic. So we chose a good spot to kind of position ourselves, I think. He's just kind of settling. But the problem is, is there's not much water there, unfortunately, so it's not the best place for him to drink. He needs to find maybe a little bit of a better spot, and then he'll be able to drink a lot better than that. though. See, he's just looking at all these little puddles. Graham, you say he's so full, he's struggling to walk. Well, he is, isn't he? He's very full. So I wonder if after a drink he might lead us back to wherever he's been and maybe we'll find a kill somewhere here that he's had and has been feeding on over the last little bit. That's what I'm hoping at least. I think he's found himself a little bit of water now to drink. It's not the best place though. There's a much better place not far from where we are behind us a little bit. So if he just walked and crossed this big open clearing, there's actually a nice little puddle behind that he could drink at a lot more effectively. The thing is, is that this water is probably very nice. It's seeping from the dam. This is seepage that's coming through the dam wall and out the back. And so the water is probably very clean from going through all of this sand and soil and substrate. And that means that it probably tastes a lot better than anything else and we've seen things like twin dams at the moment doesn't look great and so these are probably a lot better places for him to try and drink from He's just figuring out a way to get out of the mud while he's sort of walking along because there's, there's one thing that a cat doesn't like is mud and there we go off we go again I think he might find somewhere just to lie down he's heading back to where that water buck was walking there he goes across a little eroded section so behind the dam wall and in front of the car and isn't that cool it's just so epic <laughs> he's such a champion cat absolutely love spending time with this guy he's just always so obliging to us and i love how he just also just slowly ambles he's really got nowhere to go he's not a territorial individual yet he doesn't have to worry about finding himself a place to go and scent mark or anything like that he can just kind of stroll around and well go into a little drainage ditch if he wants to and go and have a little look at a three-banded plover that's walking behind him as well are you going to chase the three-banded plover? Don't chase the three-banded plover. Don't be naughty. Leave the three-banded plover alone. At the end of the day, it doesn't need to be hunted. Maybe the little plover's got eggs. It's going to be interesting to see what the plover does because the plover's almost staring in the face of danger. And look at his tail. His tail is twitching as though he wants to kind of go towards it. And we might see the little plover fly away so shortly. Has it got a little insect in its mouth or what is that? It seems as though it's got something. There he comes, he's out now and sniffing around, obviously not too perturbed by this little plover behind it. I wonder if he's smelling Hosanna or maybe another leopard around here. At the end of the day, there's some very kind of pungent scents maybe left behind by them. Hosanna's been spending lots of time here, and so maybe that's who he's picking up the scent. I hear his mom was found not far from where we are now, just north of us, and so maybe, just maybe... There's a situation where she might come down this way, so we'll just have to hold thumbs. But while we sit with Tumba, I believe Jamie is negotiating the Masai Mara darkness with her spotlight. And I wonder what little creatures are in store for her tonight as she waves about her spotlight for eyes.